Hi, good evening. Um, I'd like to apologise for the slight technical difficulties we just had. I think we'll just blame it on the thunder that's happening outside. Um, my name is Gerard Durkin. I'm Chesterfield County's Budget Director and with me here this evening is Casey Walker, one of our Principal Budget Analysts. And we're here this evening to answer questions and receive feedback related to the county's plans for the American Rescue Plan Act. We are holding this um, Facebook Live session in advance of a public hearing before the Board of Supervisors this Wednesday evening to appropriate the full amount allocated to, allocated to us under this plan. Um, one of the things that's really driven home to us in the last year is, you know, budgeting is no longer a kind of cyclical process, but really an annual year-round process, especially with all the influx of federal monies we've received over the last year. And so we really thought about the importance in placing a lot of emphasis on public engagement as we make appropriations outside of our typical budget cycle by hosting events such as this, and we'll continue to do them as the months roll on and as we enter fiscal year 2023. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Casey, who is spearheading our county efforts with our APRA funds. Hello. So first, we'd like to cover the framework that guided the development process of the county's ARPA plan. The county chose to approach ARPA a bit differently than we did with CARES. When we first appropriated our CARES dollars, we had a very limited window of just over three months to spend that money by the time we appropriated it in August of last year. At the time, we also had less data on how our usual county revenues would shift in response to the pandemic. We took a cautious approach with CARES to ensure that the funds would be spent on time and the county would be, continue to be able to provide services regardless of how revenues may be impacted by the pandemic. The county is in a much different position than we were a year ago with a clearer picture of future revenues and a longer window in which to spend these federal stimulus, stimulus dollars. With that in mind, we're able to pivot the approach to a few major investments in the county that will have a lasting positive influence in the community. The plan includes mostly one-time expenditures. A couple of the public safety items are recurring expenditures, however. Our decision to include these items in the ARPA plan was to accelerate the implementation of plans that were already in the pipeline for future funding, essentially giving us a head start on a few of these items. The Board of Supervisors meeting this Wednesday will appropriate the full $68.5 million in federal dollars that the county is anticipating. If anything does change, we have some flexibility to shift dollars around within this plan and in relation to this plan. While the ARPA guidelines appear to be shifting less frequently than the CARES guidance, we did build in some options to backfill the plan if a category is eliminated. Though that is unlikely, we'll, we will bring plans back to the board for approval if a full category is no longer feasible under the ARPA legislation and the guidance that we receive from the federal government. A couple of other items to keep in mind, the direct assistance with rent and mortgage payments is not included in the ARPA plan at this time. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program has provided the county with funding to continue this program in partnership with ACTS in the region. Rent and mortgage assistance remains available to the community through these programs. The county ARPA plan also does not include funding for the school system, which has received direct funding in the form of ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 that they are currently implementing. We have held one Facebook Live previously in mid-June to provide an overview of the county's approach to ARPA and give the chance for the community to ask questions and provide feedback on the county's approach to ARPA dollars. Additionally, the Board of Supervisors held a public audit and finance community meeting um, where the county provided a preview of these plans. On that same day, the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee rec received the plan and had the opportunity to pro provide feedback. We are holding tonight's Facebook Live as a final opportunity for feedback leading into the public hearing scheduled for Wednesday evening. We encourage questions in the comment section of this video, and we also welcome feedback to our blueprint at chesterfield.gov email address. Lastly, members of the community can also sign up to speak during the public hearing on July 28th. So on the slide before you, these are the broad guide rails pre presented by the ARPA legislation. While this leaves quite a bit of room for flexibility as compared to CARES, the FAQs and interim guidance we've received has introduced some additional nuance and more than a few strongly recommended paths for local government to take with these dollars. ARPA maintains a lot of the same eligible expenses as CARES with a few key changes. And the most important for the county is an extended expenditure period through December 2024, giving us time to pursue some really significant investments in public health and safety, technology, and infrastructure. Water and sewer infrastructure, highlighted as an eligible expense by the federal government, is also a change from the, ARPA, or from the CARES legislation, and our plan does include some infrastructure spending that would qualify under this new addition. So with these guidelines in mind, this next slide shows the full planned program allocations with the county's ARPA funding. Our infrastructure category, 
um, will take this opportunity to build out some water and sewer lines necessary to meet the needs of the Western 360 area of the county. Additionally, parks saw a lot of use during the pandemic, and so people were really um, fortunate to have access to the open spaces in a lot of the county's parks and those recreation opportunities. So now is a great time for the county to expand on that investment in the park space, as well as perform necessary maintenance on the areas that saw a lot of use during the pandemic. In our public health and community support category, we include affordable housing support, and this is gap funding for affordable housing development in the county. Additionally, telework support um, will be furthering the county's efforts to maintain safety in the workplace by making additional modifications to office space to make hybrid work models permanent and reduce the number of staff in the building at one time. Also investing in additional technology to make remote work seamless for the entire workforce. The public safety category um, is something that we decided to include because the federal government is really encouraging local governments to pursue public safety funding with these resources and we're making a few, few strategic investments in this area. There's funding to allow the Commonwealth's attorney to continue to meet the workload that is in place as the courts catch up on a backlog of cases created by the pandemic. The police department will also pursue a real-time crime center to leverage live data to assess trends and deploy resources at the right time to the right places. The police department's Midlothian police station development will be accelerated using ARPA resources in order to acquire the land where the station is to be placed, allowing the county to use the existing CIP dollars to um, create engineering and construction sooner. Fire and EMS will also formalize a pilot program to bring preventative care into the community and improve health, health outcomes for the community before an emergency situation arises. The fire department will also stand up a peak demand ambulance that was not tied to any particular station. This ambulance will move throughout the county where it is most needed throughout the day and provide fast and efficient service for emergency scenarios that do arise. The final category of um, funding that the county is pursuing with ARPA is cybersecurity. Um, we are utilizing the provision of government services category um, using reimbursement for the loss of expected revenue growth that did not materialize as a result of the pandemic. These investments will include penetration testing, election security, and some technology infrastructure to keep the network security up to date. We also have some additional projects in mind should anything unexpectedly change. Shown here are a few options that we'd consider next on our list if we need to slot in any alternatives. This includes Otterdale Road stormwater improvements, um, an expansion on the parks and recreation investment beyond the $25 million included in the plan, any eligible payroll, which is something we use our CARES funding towards. Um, this is not something that we consider as a primary use of ARPA, but it is something we are able to claim reimbursement for if we choose to do that. And finally, contributions to the county's liabilities in the form of um, retiree health care is something the county will consider if we need additional um, uses of these funds or if any categories are eliminated. And with that, we'd like to take a, a look at the questions that we may have received on Facebook. Since COVID is coming back, are there any funds available for out-of-work senior residents in Chesterfield? There are funds available through the ACTS um, organization for um, rental and mortgage assistance. There's uh, resources available there. Um, there are also um, resources for um, employment counseling through Humankind, I believe, that is still in place. Um, additionally, um, other, other resources, I mean, it depends on what kind of resources you need assistance with. The food bank is also an additional resource for the, uh, for the county. We'll give a moment for any additional questions coming in through Facebook. There's a question asking about stormwater improvements needed um, related to the priority. Um, I'm not sure what the what what is meant by a priority. Um, over, I would say that over the last few years, the county has made some significant investments in stormwater, and our budget um, continues to do that, especially with the maintenance fees that are applied to residential bills. Um, as we certainly develop our future capital plans, that is always a uh, subject matter that's always at the forefront of our minds and will continue to be so as we develop our next CIP over the next five years. Okay, I think that's it on questions we've received. So thank you so much for tuning in this evening. And as Casey pointed out, um, 
there is still time to sign up for the public hearing and we are always available for feedback through our blueprint at chesterfield.gov and so thank you.